welcome to the show, The Total You. I am your hostess, Evangelist Farise Wallace, and we're coming under the direction of Abundant Faith Cathedral in Detroit. We're under the direction of Bishop Joel T. Wallace, who is the pastor. Our presentation is about your mind, body, soul, and spirit. So I'm asking, sit back and enjoy this broadcast. All right, we're continuing with the interview of our own Bishop Joel T. Wallace. Amen. He introduced himself as being called at the age of 13, yes. but did not go out until how many years later? It's about 25 years later. Okay, and you were saying how we should be aware that we're called and making very certain that we're called of God and we allow God to do the direction. Now, as a pastor, and you were mentioning before about being aware of your sheep. Yes. Now, and I had mentioned something about going to school. When you're being taught to be aware of your sheep, are there certain things that we should be aware of as a pastor or? Yeah, I mean, it's just like your children. Okay. You know, it's, to me, it's no different. You, you want to take care of uh, your children. So as being a pastor, these are God's children. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And, and you want to be um, a good caretaker okay. of God's children. Okay. Amen. Because if you offend them, what did he say? It's better than you have a millstone, a around thousand pounds uh, around your neck and thrown to the depths of the sea to offend the least one of mine. Yes. So it's important that as a leader, um, you don't look at yourself, but you look at what is the need of the sheep. Okay. Yeah. And the thing that you were saying, okay, a lot of pastors become elevated in their mindsets so that they don't pay attention to the sheep. Mm. Wow. Yes. Well. <sighs> yeah, I put you on the spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, the, thing, the thing is, you know, let, let's say what we do. Okay. So nobody can accuse us of, you know, uh, point they don't fingers. Mean point okay. fingers. Yeah. What we do is, you know, if it's in you, one of the things that's in us uh, coming through the age, the ages we are and coming through the 50s and the 60s and what have you, we found that um, families, men or women, they took care of their families. And as we got older, in my case, um, I started working at 13 mm -hmm. and um, buying little things and asking my mom, what does she want? Does she need anything? And, you know, and just looking at her because of who she was. Just like I, I've heard people say, um, sports uh, athletes, I hear them say, I, I, I got into this because I wanted to get my mother out the hood. Okay. Um, my mother worked hard for me, and, and, and this is the way for her to get out the hood. This is the way I get my family out. This is the way that will help us to do something different. That means they're not being selfish about what they, what they are doing, but they have somebody else in their mindset. Why would I say athletes? Because pastors can get into a place where they're doing better. God is blessing them. And in our case, we try to help those who need help. Along that frame of mind, mm. what happens about that person who you're trying to help mm -hmm. and is not having the effect that you know they could have? You mean trying to help? Some, yes. Trying to help somebody and, and they're not receiving it? Yes. Wow. Yeah, but there's a lot of things like that. and. I know it's important for us as the people that we are. Um, you know, some people, you can you can do everything within your power, and it just seems like they're coming around. I just think in that case, you have to pray for them um, and uh, have a prayer team uh, praying for that individual that they see where they are and where they need to be before it's too late mm -hmm. because sometimes their lifestyle will take them to places they shouldn't be and something might happen. And then, you know, if you, if you as an individual, as a leader, know that you've done everything within your power to help them, it's out of your hands then. 
I have heard a lot of pastors who have to the point where they just want to just give up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I read about it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, it, it can be frustrating. You know, some people look at the glam. You know, the glamour part okay, of come on. ministry, and they see the pastor riding in this and driving this, flying in this or whatever. And, you know, and they think, well, yeah, you know, I can get off this job. I can do this. I can do that. And when you have that kind of attitude, mm -hmm. um, it, it can change your, your format on what you should be. You know, you can rewrite the script different than what God would have it to be. Yes, God will bless you. Yes, God will take you to a place you've never been. But you have to stay focused mm -hmm. on what you should do, and that's keeping your eyes on the prize. Being a good steward also of God's people, a steward of them. Managing the gifts uh -oh. that God sent. Okay. Managing the gifts, but yes. also the mindsets of the people too, right? Yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. And the Bible said, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. It's important for the people to come and understand what, what God is saying, what God wants. And then we as leaders, pastors and evangelists and others, it, it's up to us to teach them and to show okay. them. Mm -hmm. So they will know which, which way they could go, how God want to bless them, you know, and let, let them know that you're going in this direction. Well, here's what's going to happen because seed time and harvest is real. Whatever you might do is coming back. Whether you do, if you do good, you're going to get some good harvest, good coming back to you. You do bad, oh my God, it's coming back. So we have to teach them what the Word of God, and along with what life principles. Okay. And uh, and so you do the best you can to help. So yeah. as a pastor, you're teaching of uh, the shepherd, the sheep, mm -hmm. how to walk mm -hmm. and to hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, if, especially if you get somebody, let's say you get a young person in the church and, and they're growing up under you, and then as they get older, you teach them the, the, the parts of life they need to have because that's what they did. That's what the uh, Jewish children did, uh, okay. the fathers and the mothers did for the Jewish, the Jewish children as they came up so they know about life and life principles. Okay. And that's what we have to do. It's important because... That child that's in your ministry is not going to stay the same age. Yeah. They're going to get older. So you want to build up leaders. Okay. You want to make, uh, um, put it into them so as they grow, they become a leader so they can reach back and get the younger people that's under them. I think that's important to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And very important. as a pastor, it's very important that you do that. But like I said, you have some who don't follow directions. Yeah. Do you throw your hands up? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> it becomes frustrating. Yes. When you, you know, especially if you're giving good advice to people, good advice. You know, I'm not a counselor. I'm going to just show you what the book says mm -hmm. and giving you good advice and you don't take it. And then what happens is, they might go in a direction and the bridge is out and they fall over the bridge and then they come back to you. Won't it? Right. And it's scratched up, you know, and then you got, and then you have to take the, uh, the salve out and, you know, and the band-aids and okay. all these things to, uh, you know, and the slings for the arms, you okay. know, literally, uh, to, to help them to get back where they need to be. And then some people go right back out and do the same old thing again. So, so what do you do? As a leader, you know, mm -hmm. I have, to, I have um, had that, and I tell the person when they come up for prayer, you know what you need to do? You need to have a good relationship with the Lord. You need to listen to what he's saying to you, All right. and then you wouldn't be back in the same situation that you're in now. So you have to, do, I mean, that's part of what we do. And, and the God, you know that the Lord is so good because he looks at us. The Lord looks at us. Nobody's perfect. Nobody here is perfect. But the Lord look at us, and, and I'm so glad that, I mean, he's a forgiving God. I'm so glad that he does not hold it against us when we say, you know what, I'm sorry. I'm not doing that anymore. I've learned my lesson. It's like your child, you mm -hmm. know. You're not going to take your child and, and beat them, and, and, you know, because they might have made a mistake. 
sometimes you have to talk to them and say, listen, you don't need to go back there. I've seen that, and, um, and thank God for that. Amen. So, yeah, it's, it's a job. It's a real job. That's why you have to be called. <laughs> I'm going to go with that part, mm -hmm. the job. Ooh. Many a pastor feel that they don't need to get paid mm -hmm. or they don't get paid mm -hmm. or the parishioners feel, well, he's in a position God called him, so I don't need to pay him. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that uh, some pastors are in positions where um, the congregation want to keep them poor. Mm -hmm. they, they only should drive um, a hoopty, a hoopty mm -hmm. if you don't know what that is, but a nice used car, uh, you know, and, uh, um, and, and feel like they just need to li live in a, um, a house that they wouldn't live in, you know. Uh, no, that's not true. I, I know for a fact that when you take care of the profit of, of the house, God will take care of you. There's so many scriptures in the Bible and dealing with that. Um, uh, even when um, Elijah had to, uh, he was coming down the road all the time, coming through this town. And this, and this rich woman says, hey, listen, told her husband, you need to uh, build a little room on for this prophet because uh, we want to do something good for him. And they did. They built a little room. They put a little table in there and I guess a candle or whatever they had so he can do whatever he had to do. And he was so uh, pleased about it. He asked, he asked you know, the lady, what does you want me to do for you? What is it? And um, one of his handlers that was with him said, oh, she don't have a child. He said, okay, tell you what, by this time next year, you're going to be pregnant. Uh-oh. And she had a child. She had a, a man child. And that back then, they, you know, women wanted to have a man child so they could um, take the uh, mm -hmm. everything that happened in inheritance so that they could uh, um, sort of man be there to do that with. Well, guess what? Because the favor of God was on her now to get pregnant, the boy got older and he got sick. Mm -hmm. And when he got sick, he passed away. And she laid him up in, in the bed and she got her donkey, said, get me my donkey ready, got on the donkey and went to where the prophet was. And because she had done all of that for the prophet, and the story goes that he asked, is everything okay? And she said, all is well. But she told him what, what was going on. He sent his servant to pray for the boy, but it didn't work. Elijah came himself mm -hmm. and laid on that boy and that, and that boy came back to life. Listen, when you take care of your leader, okay. God okay. will make you to be a person that his favor is on. Amen. I believed in that. Even when I got to church, it doesn't matter. I listen to the pastor. I take care of him. Amen. I do what I, what I did. And okay. God blessed me for it. Yes, he has. So it behooves us to take care of the leader, the one who's over us, the pastors who are watching the show. Sure, yeah. And, and you, know, you know, and why would you have your leader driving a hoopty? Why would you, he, he should have the best. He should drive the best. Um, you know, in, in these other larger churches, these uh, people, they see and they want to bless their pastor. They want to bless the wife. Amen. And I'm, I'm telling you for what we did, mm -hmm. because um, our pastor doing um, appreciation, mm -hmm. we did it. Amen. And it was and listen, it, it didn't hurt. And we did what we had to do. And maybe it might have been a little more than somebody else, but we did it because that's what we felt. And God has blessed us and he'll bless you if you take care of your leader. Speaking on blessings. What do what else do you teach your people in about blessings? Well, they, uh, as far as them being blessed, yes. Oh yeah, there's so many scriptures in there, man. That's, that's dealing with being blessed because it's it's how we feel within ourselves who we are. Okay. One thing I realize I I want to be I want to be everything God want me to be, and then. You and know, I want more of him. Amen. Yeah, yeah, okay. more of the Lord. And and then when you when you get the Lord, 
you know, I'm not looking at his hands. I'm looking at him. Okay. But, but what happens is because you have taken on the Lord, then you, you have the favor of God in your life. And I'm telling you, when you understand and realize what the word is saying about what you can do, one of the things that's, one of the things that's important for us is we need to be a blessing to Abraham. I'm going to bless you to be yes. a blessing to somebody else. How can you bless somebody if you don't have anything to do? If you don't have anything to give. How can you bless a family? And man, if you don't have anything to give them, you want to be in a position where God will bless you. So you will have the resources to help people when in need. Yes. So it's important and not for just the leader, yes. but for the congregation so we can help one another. Having all things in common, speaking the same thing. So it's important to know that if you're a tither and a giver, amen, God will increase you because you shall have a harvest. Some 60, some 40, some 60, hundredfold return, mm -hmm. amen, on your giving to God. So give because God is working that out for you, not and, just only the preacher. Amen. And the thing, too, is like you're instructing your sheep not just to take care of the house, but mm -hmm. also to be an example. There you go. Amen. You have to be because I, I, how can you know, how can you say you, the, the concepts of God, mm -hmm. the covenant of God, amen, uh, is real. And you're saying that you're following the Lord. If you go in the Old Testament, you'll see how many people mm. had it going on. Okay. Rich. If it was in livestock, if it was in money, uh, jewels, whatever, they had it. And so I don't know the concept that people are using today that we, we don't supposed to have anything. When um, one of God's people in the Bible says he's after God's own heart. King David, amen, was wealthy. He was so wealthy that his son Solomon was wealthy. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so when Solomon went to God, he said, what do you need, Solomon? He said, give me wisdom. Okay, you already got the riches, so now you want wisdom. That's good. He didn't ask for more, more money. Money, yes. yes. And why is it that when you look at the people, when you look at Abraham, when you look at a lot of the people in the Bible that God dealt with, they were rich. Mm -hmm. They had it going on. And so why is it that we feel being saved that we don't need to have anything? If that's the way you feel, that's fine. More power to you. But I want what God wants for me. Amen. I don't, amen. I'm yeah. just saying, I don't want to, I don't want to be um, everything while I'm here on this earth. Amen. Everything God want to do for me, let him do it. However you want to do it. However you want to make it, how, whatever he wants to bring, bring it because we are a warehouse, a storehouse or a warehouse where it comes in one way, but it'll go out another way. Amen. Glory to God. And in that vein of mind, okay, so it's up to the pastor to teach the word. Yes. The unadulterated the un word. Yes, yes. Don't change it to make it the way you want it. No. Yeah, because sometimes in a the truth. <laughs> okay, yeah. As a per as a person thinketh in his heart, so is he. Okay. If you believe that you know you should um, drive a certain kind of car, small, you know, or mm -hmm. just a regular car. If you feel like you know you you want to go to certain places to buy your clothes, you know, this kind of clothes, that's on you. Mm -hmm. As a person think his heart, so is he. The, the, he here's the, uh, the thing. What if you have people in your congregation that are businessmen um, or working where they have jobs, making $100,000 or more a year? It's going to be kind of hard for them being in the corporate world, broken the ceiling, uh, the glass ceiling, and tell them you don't need to drive the car, you're driving you don't need to live in the house that you live in. Mm. Why would you do that? You do it because that's where you think. If you want to live in a three-bedroom, nice house with a fence around it, amen. Praise God for that. But it might be somebody in your, in your corporation might, be, might have a million-dollar house, a million or more. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then, you, you know, it would be wrong to tell him you shouldn't live in that kind of house. Why you deserve it? He's working. 
or she's working and that person within itself could be a blessing to you. But a lot of times people don't see that because they see who they are. It's in them. No, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't drive that kind of car. I've had that thing. I've had people to tell me that, but um, I know that if a person want to buy a Rolls Royce and he can, he can afford it. Amen. He still gives to the ministry. He still helps the poor. He helps his pastor out. Why beat, beat on him? Right. right. Because you don't have a concept. God uses ordinary people. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Amen. Uh -oh. Glory to God to get things done. And we're wow. teaching them to get those things done and to be elevated. Yes. Because it's important. Yes. Yes. It's in the word. Yes. And and you don't listen, when you come over here to, to the Lord, you want your children to be the best they can. You, you go to school, do whatever. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. You want them to um, go past where you are, amen, to be successful. And I thank God, amen, I, our, our, our uh, children and grandchildren, and, you know, uh, some of our grandchildren are doing real well. Mm -hmm. Some of our children, mm -hmm. they're doing real well. And um, we thank God for that. Well, it's the same way in a church. We want the saints to know where they can be. Because, you know, sometimes people come to you because of where they was raised. <clears throat> Excuse me. You come out the hood and... You might have a hood mentality, mm. but people need to know there's no limitations in God and to make no different Thanks. where you come from. If you do what God says, you make him the first, your first priority, uh, Matthew 6, 33, first, mm -hmm. first seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. So you want that life. Amen. All you do is seek him, get it done. And, and you can have things that maybe your parents never had before. And that's not a sin. No. But it's all what the leader thinks. If you're on a leader that thinks real big, it'll broaden your horizon. If you're on the leader that does not think like that, well, I mean, it could stifle the way you think. When I coached, um, when I got the job in Willowbrook High School, uh, the head coaching job for track, the athletic director, I'll never forget when I went in for my interview, the athletic director said we... We have uh, talked to the other school, which was Robichaud High School. Mm -hmm. We had talked to the school, and you've been there 10 years. You come with good recommendations. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he said this. He says, all I want you to do is just make us so that we won't get just ran over. Just make us so, you know, we got some wins or something. And I said in my mind, you're talking to the wrong guy. Amen. I'm not just, no, I'm a winner. I don't believe in just coming Getting in the back. middle. I don't, mm. Yes, I don't believe in that. I believe in becoming a winner. And it didn't take long. The, um, the news, the Ypsilanti news and all the other newspapers, Ann Arbor and all of them start writing about us. Amen. Because in, in such a short time, we have become winners um, and started dominating. And so that that's the way I wanted it to be. I just don't want to be, well, you know, we lost by three points. No, we are winners. When I came over here to God, I wanted to be a winner. And I read that. I am a winner. And so that's what I teach. And we're going to continue yeah. to teach people that they are better over here than they were out there. Yes, yes, yes. And people need to see. They mm. say we are uh -oh. the 67th book. Read and known among all men. So if somebody look at you and, and you never have a smile on your face and you're always complaining and, and you're a believer, something's wrong with that picture. And how can you encourage anybody else to come over when you yourself is always in the dumps? Uh-oh, mm -hmm. uh-oh. You have to lift up the name of the Lord. People have to see the anointing of God and, and what God does for you. Amen. They have to see that that would draw them, amen, to Christ. That's important, real important. And this is the part where the pastor has to continue to teach and wait. Be in God's face mm. to get instruction. Yeah, yeah. You put your ear to God's mouth. You, mm -hmm. you have to to hear because, you know, God, in, in, in our ministry, what I, what I learned to do is I'm going to tell them, I don't care where they came from. It doesn't matter. And... You know, and we had some people that's pretty, pretty rough, was pretty rough, mm -hmm. uh, even me mm -hmm. being in the uh, biker club. But one of the things that um, 
we do is we show them what the word of God is saying and and giving them so that they can be blessed so they can be a blessing to somebody else. And where you came from doesn't have anything to uh -oh, do with come where on, you come going. On. Glory to God. Because God got it already set out for you, amen, to be the head and not the tail. Oh, God. <laughs> Above and not beneath. Come on, somebody. Glory and, to God. And I like the fact that, okay, at, um, we came from a church that used to do testimonies. Yes, yes, yes. And many churches nowadays have gotten away from that. Yeah. So what do you think of it? Well, we, well, that's why we, we have it uh, instituted because we ourselves had kind of got away from mm -hmm. the people testifying ourselves. And it was like the Lord laid on my heart. Amen. We need to testify. We need to hear what the Lord is doing. Just like on your prayer line, um, you know, people, when you're praying for somebody, then they get a testimony about yeah. how they were healed. Yeah. Amen. And and just like um, it wasn't long ago, tell, tell us about the young lady that was you got a call from. Was it we got a call from Al Alabama, Alabama. OK, yeah. And uh, apparently she never mentioned who this person was. She just said, pray for this person. She just got admitted to ICU in UCLA mm. Hospital. This is in California. Yes. She's calling from Alabama requesting prayer for this young lady. And I waited for about a week or so, and she texted me back. She said, she's eating now. And so I waited another week. I said, well, how is she now? She's completely healed. So I thank and praise the Lord because, like you said, testimonies mean something. They encourage a person to keep going. Yes, yes, yes. It's important to hear what God has done to somebody else so that, you know, whatever you're going through, you know that God can do it for you. Amen. And so that's why we need to testify. You know, uh, yeah, some people have gotten away from that, but, you know, we instituted that back into our ministry so people can be encouraged. Because there's times I went to church, man, beat up, mm -hmm. you know, felt like I couldn't see the next day. But then getting there and hear the people testify what God have done. Oh, boy. I tell you, it gives you strength and, and you realize that, okay, if God did it for them, yeah. Got to do it for you. And along that frame of mind, okay, it says in the word, forsake not to assemble yourselves together. And this is why you do it. Not just to be there for that hour and then, but to be encouraged so that you can yes. make it through the next week. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 It's, it's important. It'll give you, you know, it's like filling your gas tank up. And then when <laughs> you get there and you hear that, amen, because you might go to church on low. You know, it's past the quarter mark. It's on empty. And you get in there and you hear the testimonies of what God have done. You hear it. And, man, you get a good message from a uh, and, and And then First Lady, glory to God. And you get a good message. And I'm going to tell you something. It will encourage your heart. Amen. You can go out saying, I can fight this fight, man. I'm going to fight because I'm a winner. Glory to God. <laughs> and along that line, we're going to say the church as a pastor, we need to do more than just getting up there and speaking, but to encourage the people to continue to grow in God. Stay tuned. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the presentations and the broadcast. I hope you avail yourself of all the information that was given. Remember to continue to tune in at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. here on Rick TV. Mm -hmm.